This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's time for a smackdown between two kind of high-end 15-inch mobile workstations slash ultrabooks in the 15-inch category. This is the Dell XPS 15, the 9570, so it's still currently the latest generation that's available. And this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme, which is a new product for Lenovo in 2018. And I think pretty much they did make this to compete with this. We're going to smack them down now. So first off, pricing. Pricing is usually important to everybody. In the United States, because that's where we are, the pricing for the X1 Extreme starts higher, but that's because the configuration doesn't go as low end. Dell is always great for offering a whole lot of XPS configurations for their 15 inch and their 13 inch, as a matter of fact. So they start lower down. So they have a 979, $979 starting price, but that gets you a Core i5, no NVIDIA dedicated graphics at all, 8 gigs of RAM and a hard drive, a spinning hard drive and a smaller battery. So with the X1 Extreme, there's no option without the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti Max-Q. Say that three times fast. They both at the higher end too. Dell will have that same GPU inside. So with Lenovo, it starts around $1,394 currently on their website. That gets you the i5, same i5, 8 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig NVMe SSD instead of that hard drive, 1080p display for both of these. As you go up the configuration chain, the prices in the United States are pretty close to equivalent. I'm pretty sure that these manufacturers are working on keeping them price competitive with each other, as a matter of fact. Now, they both go up to Core i7 if you want, 8750H, even 8850H for the Lenovo, but Dell goes all the way up to a Core i9. But don't get too excited because the, thir the chassis is so thermally constrained and the, the, the i9 does have to throttle quite a bit. Plus, an i9 is more of a marketing thing Intel came up with. It's really architecturally pretty much a higher clocked Core i7 CPU anyway. Lenovo is interesting because they have two M.2 SSD drive bays. Usually in anything other than a gaming laptop, you just won't see that. So Dell has two options. If you get that low end option, it has a spinning hard drive, no SSD is installed there, and a smaller 56 watt hour battery because the hard drive is taking up space. If you do go with the SSD with the Dell, there is one M.2 SSD slot, so that's as many SSDs as you can have, just one. Both of these have two slots for RAM, so they have equivalent upgrade paths. You can get them with 16 gigs of RAM or 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM if you want. They both have socketed Wi-Fi cards. Lenovo uses the Intel 8560AC, which is a good card. A lot of most people like that pretty well. And Dell goes with Killer. It's the 1535AC, which is the one that isn't actually a rebranded Intel card. Some people don't like Killer cards, so keep that in mind. Of course. You can open up both of these and upgrade the Wi-Fi cards, upgrade your RAM, upgrade your SSD. You get the idea. So if you really hated that Wi-Fi card but loved everything else about the Dell, you could swap the Wi-Fi card if you're a little bit adventurous with doing laptop upgrades. Both of these are available with your choice of a 1080p full HD display or a 4K wide gamut display. So Dell is the brighter display. Whether you go with the 1080p or the 4K, they claim 400 nits. And on our 4K model, we actually exceeded that according to our colorimeter. And you can see the measurements on screen. With Lenovo, the 1080p display is a 300 nit display. And these are standard, almost full sRGB for the 1080p's in terms of color gamut. And their 4K is also wide gamut. And they claim 400 nits, but ours measured 359. Didn't quite reach that, so it's not as bright. When it comes to the display quality, they're both lovely displays. They might claim to nominally support HDR, but these are not OLED true HDR displays. But they do have wide color gamut, almost complete Adobe RGB coverage, which is the wider gamut and harder to cover. That's very impressive. In terms of color accuracy, you can see the charts on screen where lower bars are better. The ThinkPad does better in terms of color accuracy. None of the colors is too excessive or blown out. With the Dell, the reds are super blown out. But on the other hand, the ThinkPad has a very high white point, which can skew accuracy some. And they might be doing this to try to get the brightness higher. Who knows? Whereas Dell has a pretty decent white point on. So they each have their pluses. It's really not an easy pick here. I would say experientially, the ThinkPad looks more saturated in terms of colors, which is great if you're consuming content, watching videos. Videos. But if you're creating content, it can be a little bit misleading because other people with lower gamut displays might not see such a saturated look. The Dell has a chin cam. We know this by now. The XPS 13 refresh that it was just announced moves the webcam finally back up top. Maybe the XPS 15 will someday get a refresh and will do the same thing. It would be welcome because nobody looks great from under here particularly, do they? 
When it comes to keyboards, I think you can guess who the winner is. ThinkPad keyboards are legendary. This is an excellent keyboard with good key travel, travel tactile, smile-shaped keys, nice actuation force. It's all there. It's all very nice. The Dell has a pretty... Uh, 1.3 millimeter short travel keyboard with a kind of harsh bottoming out sensation. It's not a hideous keyboard. There's certainly there are weirder and worse keyboards out there like the MacBook Pro. But I think most people would like the ThinkPad better. They're both backlit and white. They both have very good trackpads. Now, you've got Microsoft Precision Drivers on the Dell. I know some of you like that. I like both trackpads equally as well. If you're into that ThinkPad's nav style pointer in the keyboard area, well, this is going to be a ThinkPad for you, but probably you're already a ThinkPad person if you're into that. In terms of build quality, they are both durable. We have a mix of carbon fiber and metal here. The ThinkPads are famous for their MIL STD A10G MIL spec build qualities, and uh, their quality control is usually pretty good. That doesn't mean you'll never get a lemon or something like that, but it's pretty good. The Dell XPS 15 has that nifty silver and carbon fiber interior look. It's really up to you as to which you like better. ThinkPad people tend to like the understated ThinkPad look. A lot of people like the XPS with its carbon fiber and its shiny metal top. I leave that up to you. Uh, when it comes to stability, <laughs> Dell XPS models, particularly the XPS 15 for the last couple of generations, has been a work in progress when it first shipped. The driver and BIOS issues and all that sort of thing. So many months into the life cycle is sometimes the best time to buy, which is where we're at right now. I, our XPS 15 was a little bit quacky and had some driver issues and, and stuff like that. Well, now there have been several BIOS updates, lots of drivers, and it's a pretty stable thing. The ThinkPad from the get-go was very stable and pretty reliable. But even though Dell has pretty much gotten to the point where they're pretty decent and stable and all that sort of thing, I still give the ThinkPad the win for the whole stability and the driver quality and the BIOS quality. When it comes to performance, you're looking at pretty much equivalent options here. The same, if you go to the dedicated graphics with the Dell, the same GPU, the same CPU options, other than the fact that there's no Core i9 option for the ThinkPad. Performance levels on benchmarks are really neck and neck. The ThinkPad comes a little bit faster for CPU-based tests, and the Dell is just a little bit faster for GPU tests, but none of them are really statistically terribly meaningful, to be honest. These are both very thin and, relatively speaking, very light laptops to have the kind of horsepower they have inside, this kind of mobile workstation sort of power inside. Footprints and weight, by the way, are just about the same on these two. Uh, Lenovo's two fans and two heat pipe solution is a little bit more effective, though, than Dell. The XPS 15 has always been famous for throttling and its thermal constraints, and it can get pretty hot. If the CPU and the GPU are both being taxed, those of you who are interested in playing games, for example, or doing a ZBrush or Blender, those kind of rendering programs, you'll probably see more thermal throttling and a hotter chassis to the touch than the ThinkPad. But the ThinkPad gets pretty darn toasty, too. It still gets that thermal win, though. Battery life is where the Dell really fights back. Of course, it depends on which battery you get. I think probably most people are opting for the SSD option with the bigger 97-watt-hour battery instead of the hard drive with the 56-watt-hour battery. That's a big battery, 97 watt hour. It's hitting the legal limit for what the FCC allows you to take up on an airplane. The Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme has an 80 watt battery, which is decent, but 80 watt hour versus 97 watt hour, you've already figured out what's going on here. So we have the 4K model for each of these. And with the, with the ThinkPad, we manage about six hours with light productivity kind of use and streaming video, a little Photoshop, that sort of thing. Brightness set to 150 nits. Same equivalent on the Dell with the 4K display, and we're seeing more like seven and a half hours. And if you're going to that full HD, which typically has better battery life, less demanding, then the Dell can push like nine hours, maybe even 10, if you work on that power management. And still, with the ThinkPad, I don't think you're ever going to hit beyond seven and a half hours or so. So, Dell for the win when it comes to that. In terms of the chargers, like I said, the weight is about the same. Dell is a little bit heavier. They're both kind of stylized chargers instead of your basic bricks, but in terms of the, the volume that they take up in your bag, it's about the same. Now, the ThinkPad does have fast charging, and they say you can get up to 50% of your charge in a half an hour, which is pretty impressive, and in, in my experience, it does charge extremely quickly, so that helps a little bit with its weaker battery life. Now, both of these do happen to support an active pen using Wacom AES technology, though ne neither manufacturer really advertises that fact a lot. Maybe because it's a laptop form factor, so it's not the easiest thing to use as a notepad. It doesn't bend in a 360-degree fashion, for example. But the pen technology is similar. The pen experience is similar with both of these. 
So there you have it, Dell XPS 15 9570 versus the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme. So as you can see, I mean, these are both high-end laptops meant for business people and those who are willing to spend a lot on performance, thinness, lightness, and quality of build. In the end, it's going to come down to any brand preference you already have and aesthetics to a certain point. But in terms of performance, they're just about equal. A little bit of a thermal thumbs up for the ThinkPad in terms of thermal throttling, but they both will if you really push them very hard. In terms of displays, the display options are similar, but Dell gets the nod for having the brighter displays. ThinkPad fights back with a better keyboard. Battery life, Dell wins on that one. So you can see there's not a clear winner here, but you decide which of those points is the most important to you when you go out and buy one of these, and hopefully this makes it easier. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.